Today, we discuss the vehicles of one of the first nations of War Thunder, coming straight from Germany. The German tech tree contains a lot of interesting vehicles, from lightly armored self-propelled guns to their heaviest tanks clad in the thickest of armor, and all the way to the most modern MBTs. The first rank mainly consists of nimble vehicles with next to no armor that are great for lightning quick attacks. The PZK PFW 2C and F, the Flak Panzer 1, the Flak Panzer 38T, as well as the premium Aufklärungspanzer 38T. All are nice tanks well suited to fast and fun low rank gameplay. But right next to them are a few gems that offer decent protection. For their BR, of course. The legendary PZK PFW3 sometimes feel like a tracked fortress, even though it's just a medium tank. That's not all, by the way. There is also a Sturmpanzer II, an ideal pick if you're into big calibers. Its 150mm gun packs quite a punch. Okay, we made it to the second rank. Say hi to a few vehicles that you're already familiar with, or rather, to their superior variants. The tanks of the PZK PFW3 family boast new guns. And there is an interesting PZK PFW4 variant. A lot of vehicles of this area, the Sturgi, the Marda, the very same PZ4 to name a few, sport a brand new 75mm gun. Nice. Probably the most representative tank of this rank is the F2 variant of the Panzerkampfwagen 4. It carries a great gun that doesn't take long to reload and reliably penetrates nearly every single target within its BR range. Given your mobility, well, even the most well-protected KV-1 should be afraid of you, and rightly so. You'll also find a few vehicles of a relatively rare kind, the wheeled armored cars. The extremely maneuverable Pumas will devour anyone who underestimates their capabilities as flankers. It's a great pick for anyone who loves high-risk, high-reward kind of gameplay. Obviously, we can't leave without dropping a few words about this legendary half-track SPG. It features this monstrous 8.8-centimeter Flak 37 cannon. Oh, yes. Yep, the gun that you'd expect to see on a Tiger at a slightly higher rank. Let's put it this way. You get this heavy firepower at the cost of mobility, though, so don't get too cocky. There are a few excellent premium captured vehicles coming from the US and the USSR. And what do you think about this beauty? The Panzerwerfer, a half-track mounting 15cm Nebelwerfer rocket launchers and carrying 10 15cm rockets. Just listen to the sound. Welcome to the third rank. There are quite a few variants of the vehicles that you've already mastered at this point. The Panzerkampfwagen 4 got some additional protection and a new gun. The Stug is succeeded by the Jagd Panzer IV and the Panzerwagen 470, decent armor and excellent guns. <laughs> What's more to like? At the same time, this era has a fair share of vehicles built with other design principles in mind. The Dicker Max, the Nashorn, the Sture Emil. These are classic glass cannons with amazing firepower and next to no armor. If you handle high-pressure situations with calm and confidence, these beasts will serve you well. This rank is also where you'll find a few of the best SBAAGs in the game. The Verbelwind and the Ostwind, two excellent anti-aircraft platforms on the Panzer IV chassis. These two are versatile vehicles capable of spewing out a river of rounds enabling them both to fight aircraft and ground vehicles with the same brutal efficiency. Speaking of brutal efficiency, take note. These are the Tiger H1, the Tiger E, and the Panther D. These are some scary big cats, let's put it this way. 
infamous high-power guns, fast reload speed, amazing armor, and decent mobility to boot, you'll have a lot of fun playing those, that's for sure. The premium lineup once again consists of many captured vehicles. There are former Soviet KVs, one of which was heavily modified by German engineers, and a Churchill captured from the British. And the Brumba. The Brumba deserves a few words on its own. If you like to make things go boom, that's just one of the best ways to do it. A 15 centimeter gun and good armor make for a deadly, and fun, combination. The fourth rank is all about decent armor and even punchier guns. There are four new Panther variants, with the Panther II leading the pack. Keep a lookout for the Panther A. It's arguably the best early variant of the tank. A long barrel 75mm gun that doesn't take long to reload, and a good BR. It's pretty neat. It also can survive some hits, but never let an enemy see your sides. The Panther II is also something else. It's basically a really beefed up Panther. It's still not a good idea to take hits, especially taking into account what kind of opponents you're going to face. But you also get an even mightier cannon, and better mobility, allowing you to reliably getting a jump on your opponents. This is also the era when many of the famous formidably armored German beasts are introduced. We're talking about the Königsteiger, the Jag de Panther, and the Ferdinand. These are vehicles for tankers who enjoy steady, deliberate kind of gameplay. Only a few guns at your rank can actually hurt you, and you have access to an 8.8 centimeter gun. And a shell that punches through 235 millimeters of steel, all the while bearing enough explosive matter to make a really good boom. The most interesting premium here is the Speerpanzer RU-251. This light tank is quite different from what you've seen in the main tree. It's very fast and agile, has virtually no armor, and features a formidable 90mm gun. In the hands of an experienced ambusher, this little fella can literally set the world on fire for the enemy team. The fifth rank is where we see an end of the glorious era of steel giants. The war changes. Now it's all about relatively light and, at the same time, well-protected tanks that paved the way for the MBTs of the days to come. It doesn't mean that there will be no steel giants at all. On the contrary. The Königsteiger, now bearing a deadly 105mm cannon, passes the crown to the new king of the thick armor, the mouse. It even looks like a bunker on tracks. There is also an extremely heavily armored SPG called the Jagdtiger. The latter two carry a 128mm gun with extreme penetrating capabilities, and their armor can have an effective thickness of more than 300mm in some places. Hell's bells. And here comes a tank representing a new generation, the Leopard 1. Great mobility, an excellent 105mm L7 gun, and a wide array of shells to pick from. This is the tank that heralded the German comeback in terms of tank building, and became a standard of European forces. Be very careful as you're lacking in armor department, and get those sweet victories for the Bundeswehr. When it comes to premiums, take a look at the Leopard A1A1 carrying the Rheinmetall RH120, 120mm gun, which was used on many European MVTs of the modern era. There is also a peculiar tank destroyer equipped with guided anti-tank missiles, the Raketenjagd Panzer II. This mobile platform drops all those bothersome cannons in favor of the SS-11 first-generation ATGMs that can punch through up to 600 millimeters of armor. Finally, we get to the sixth rank. By this point, tank designers had very different sensibilities when it came to armor and firepower. ATGM vehicles get access to second-generation missiles, which make it much easier to hit agile targets. 
A Leopard variant comes with a stabilizer and introduces an extremely destructive APFSDS shell. Prefer something lighter? Okay, we got you covered. Take a look at the Big Light Panzer carrying a 57mm gun and tow 80 GMs. Or the Tank Argentino Mediano featuring the 105 cannon. The same that we saw on the Leopard. Decent mobility and access to a number of different weapon types allow for some interesting tactical gameplay. And here we are at the very top. The top German anti-aircraft vehicle is the Flugabwehr Kanonpanzer Gepard. It has two 35mm fast-firing guns and a radar, meaning that hostile aircraft will find it very difficult to escape your rod. The Kampfpanzer 70 is what Germany got out of the production hell of an American-West German joint project to develop a new MBT. Its gun launcher is a dual-purpose armament that can shoot both conventional shells and ATGMs. Just keep in mind that it takes quite a while to reload, 10 seconds to be exact. The tank also carries a 20mm AA gun and displays impressive mobility. All in all, it's a competitive vehicle that can hunt both air and ground targets. Two top vehicles of the German tech tree, the Leopard 2K and the Leopard 2A4, embody all the strengths of the tanks of the previous generations. They display great mobility, pack a punch and can take a punch, or at least some punches, especially the 2A4 with its composite armor. That's not what Leopards are known for, though. You should be especially wary of exposing your lower glacy, as this is a good way to get ammo racked. But if you utilize their strengths and maintain combat awareness, you'll be able to hold your ground against any enemy and emerge victorious. That's it for today. What are your favorite German vehicles? Do tell us in the comments below.